Welcome, Welcome to the Moto Marketing Podcast, presented by Racer X, the podcast for moto industry professionals, entrepreneurs, and riders. If you want to grow your brand and business in today's digital first world, you have to know how to turn a stranger into a fan, turn a like into a customer. You have to know how to turn attention into dollars. This podcast is dedicated to keeping you in the know on real marketing tactics that work in the moto world so that you grow your business and help grow the sport. Get ready to learn from the very same marketing experts trusted by Racer X, Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, GNCC, and NBC Sports. They'll help you navigate the world of digital marketing for your moto brand. This is the Moto Marketing Podcast. Podcast. Presented by Racer X. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Moto Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Nessler, and today we do have our co host, the Chief Marketing Officer himself of Impact Media. We got George CC in the studio with us, and today is a little bit of a different episode. We're going to bring to you um, some wisdom from the guy that makes all of the campaigns uh, happen at Impact Media, or I should say, the guy that leads the team that makes all the campaigns happen. George, how you doing today, man? Pretty good, sir. How are you? Oh, man. You know, couldn't be better. We yeah. had our Christmas party last night. That's a hell of a lot of fun. It was fun. It was a good time. Some good uh, inappropriate sweaters. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's uh, George and I were the only two that wore uh, those inappropriate sweaters, but it was uh, it was worth it. It was good. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You show up to a fancy place like that dressed like a buffoon. It's, yes. it's a good time. It's yes. a good time. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, you'll have to, I'll, I'll post a picture of, uh, of, of the team impact apparel on, uh, on my Instagram. If you check that out. Actually, mine was appropriate and yours yeah. is the only one that wasn't. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I would have thought that far ahead. <laughs> That's all right. It's, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Yeah. We, we always keep it inappropriate when we go to places that everybody yeah. else it, is it, dressed it, up. We're, we're totally joking. They were, there were, we we were talking to other clients that day, and they were having ugly sweater competitions for their uh, their uh, their their holiday parties, and they they flew some ideas past us what they were going to wear. We we're like, man, we are really tame in comparison to what yeah. they were going to wear. So yeah, but it was a good time. Yeah, we keep it fresh. Yeah. <laughs> so um, busy time of year. I wanted to honestly get this podcast in before Black Friday because we had a lot of special things we were doing with our clients yeah. for Black Friday. Dropped the ball on it. Had a lot of a lot of things happening, so we didn't get the podcast in. Um, and we've had a lot of really great questions coming in that that tells me there are uh, moto industry entrepreneurs out there that are interested in what can they do better. And obviously, you have a lot of options. You have your traditional media, you have your branding, you have digital, um, you have event activation, things like that. But we're going to talk about what we know best uh, here at Impact Media today and some of the things that we're doing for our Moto clients that you can can maybe take into consideration moving in to things like, obviously, 2020 is right around the corner, which means Supercross is right around the corner. And once that gets rolling, obviously, the Outdoor Nationals are right around the corner. So, um, George, you and, and our senior strategist, Lacey, and your guys' team, you guys have been, uh, you're always on the forefront of what's going on, and you've been doing some unique things uh, that have been getting results for clients. Um, let's just, I mean, get right to the, to the point. What are some of the things that a small, medium, big moto brand needs to know today and a moving into 2020 uh, to, to grow their, their revenue online. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, kind of looking at some of the results we had for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, to kind of give you a, a kind of the tale of what kind of needs to be going on. Um, so uh, we had huge results for our clients. Uh, we averaged the average return on ad spend uh, across all of our clients, whether they were running Black Friday, Cyber Monday ads or not. But during that week, the average return on ad spend was 780%. So that's the money, for those that don't know, the return on ad spend is what it sounds like. That's that's the money that they spent on the Facebook and the Instagram ads, right? And, yeah, and it was yeah. 780? 780%? Yeah. So they awesome. made, yeah, on, on average, across all of our clients, they made 780. The brands that ran specials saw upwards of 4,500% um, ROAS and a majority of them were, were between 1200% and 1500%. So for me, what that says kind of going thinking, you know, thinking to next Black Friday, Cyber Monday, or thinking to any sort of major sales holiday, your uh, Labor Days, 4th of July, uh, things like that, mm -hmm. Memorial Days. Um, 
is is to have the specials ready to go and think them out ahead of time. Uh, the clients that did the best with us knew what they were doing about two months ahead of time. They were able to set everything up on their shop on the backside, make sure they had inventory ready, make sure they had discount codes ready to go. Um, and then they came into uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday with additional ad spend. Okay. So we weren't, so for the clients that did the best, we weren't um, just adding, you know, uh, just putting in a couple of ads for them within Black Friday, within their normal campaigns. We created a separate campaign and poured more ad spend into it mm. or the other option some some of our clients took they said turn off all the other campaigns and take that you know uh take that 120 to 500 dollars a day and pump that into just the black friday cyber monday campaign so really it's about budgeting that's one of the big things that worked um what also worked is people started the people that started earliest with us not just black friday cyber monday but the folks that came on over the course of the past year uh you know even as late as coming on in august um, actually did better in Black Friday, Cyber Monday than the clients who came, who signed on with us in late October mm. or the 1st of November. And the reason for that is simply because we have more time to run the ads, to be able to optimize, to learn, you know, to identify what, what a buying persona is, what a traffic persona is. And of course, the algorithm matures over time as well. The Facebook algorithm, it understands what the purchasing behaviors are as well. So but, let's, let's break that down real yeah, quick. Absolutely. So essentially what George is saying is, is regardless of how bad somebody wants to turn the campaign on today and for it to succeed tomorrow, even if it's on a big buying day like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, unfortunately, the way social media works is the longer the ad has been running, the, the, the better it's going to do because you have more time to test different versions of the ads, see what's going to work, what audiences react to what mm -hmm. type of ads. And then, George, like you had said, the algorithm, that is essentially the brain of Facebook, Instagram, any social media platform. It continues to learn, mm -hmm. right? It's like a, a, you know, a, a, a motor movement, right? Like yep. your, your form going through a set of whoops is going to be different five months into doing it because your body has learned how to, how to take that type of impact and how to withstand that type of intensity whereas day one you're it's not going to be the same or uh, i relate it pretty much to skiing like if you've ever gone skiing and you suck and you struggle the first day right the very next day when you go your body it, it has picked up the 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 movements it's it's right. programmed that that's how the algorithm works mm -hmm. so the longer it runs the better it's going to be so what you're saying is it's not wise for somebody to say yeah whether it's black friday or just hey tomorrow i'm going to run an ad mm -hmm. and i'm going to spend three grand on it and then i'm going to take it down on on saturday that's not going to work is what you're saying yeah yeah absolutely yeah it's not going to work the long haul is really what everybody should be in so if you're listening to this podcast and you didn't run ads for black friday cyber monday um i think the best time to start advertising in general for success on Black Friday, Cyber Monday, or 4th of July sales is to start right now. And obviously, you're not going to be advertising those specials. But Are you really, talking about for next year? For next year. For next year. Yeah. So, so really, the time to start advertising for anything is in the current moment. Because the more time you give yourself, the more time you give the algorithm, the better your success is going to be over time. Uh, and I don't mean start advertising for 4th of July right now on December 5th, right. you know, or whatever today's date is. I mean, start advertising in general. because Get the campaigns get up. The get the campaigns running. up because yeah. that snowball effect is just absolutely huge. So so those were the big ones. Um, uh, it, that was the kind of the, the big things that worked and what you should be looking forward to kind of in a sales mentality, spe sales special mentality for 2020. Other things you need to be doing in 2020, if you are not on Shopify, mm. you need to get to Shopify. We had, um, we, we've turned around a, a campaign for a client. They were using... Um, Oh, I forget what the name of it was, but it was some, <laughs> it was some bottom shelf e-commerce platform. And we had been with them for like, they had been with us for three months mm -hmm. and we were sending lots of traffic and the conversion rate for what we were sending was fantastic, but their site wasn't converting. Um, we got them over to Shopify uh, and it took a, I think like six weeks or so to get them over to Shopify and their return on uh, their, their, uh, their revenue increase was around 185% in 30 days after they went to Shopify and the reason it's crazy yeah, yeah and the reason is because Shopify is built for shopping yeah. there's no two it's in the name you know right. it's in the name it's they're, like, they're the best at what they do absolutely. at this point in time but but also uh, talk about Shopify and Facebook they have some unique integrations that absolutely not every uh, shopping cart solution 
has. Right. 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 So what, what's that look like? Yeah. So, so that, that brings us into Instagram shopping. So you've probably seen the ability to tag your products in your organic Instagram post, right? Because you have your shop right. set up. Yep. If you're using Shopify, what you can do at that point then is you can actually take those organic posts where you've tagged the individual products. So if you haven't seen these, so picture like, uh, you know, picture a, a, a shot of, you know, a, of a bike and a helmet and a pair of boots, right? Each one of those things will have a dot next to them. Yeah. If the rider has all these things on, you tap on it yep. and the the dots will come up on the boots, on the helmet, on the goggles, on the bike. Mm-hmm. And then what, what then what can and then you do? they can they can shop from there. But here's the big thing. If you're using Shopify and you can get your 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 store set up right, you can actually start to use that from within Shopify and you can start to actually promote those organic posts now inside of targeted campaigns. Mm. And that's the next big thing for us. Uh, we were um, we were given access to that couple weeks ago a couple right? weeks ago yeah a couple yeah. weeks ago they beta tested it with uh with some really big brands and then our rep came to us and said hey we're going to go ahead and open beta up to you guys as well and so now we're doing that for a couple of our clients so that's the next biggest thing so that everybody will have access to that eventually so obviously if you're not a client of ours and you're like well impact has access we're, we 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 get early access to new products and and and, and targeting abilities that facebook has but it eventually will be made available uh, once they iron, they use us to, to iron out the kinks, yeah, things yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. But eventually, you know, John's exhaust shop mm-hmm. made up, obviously. Obviously, sure. yes. <laughs> we'll have access to that, correct? Yeah. Or am oh, I wrong? No, yeah, okay. yeah you're, you're right. Just just like anything, Facebook rolls out these things incrementally, starting with the largest brands in the world, you know, Amazon, Walmart, stuff like yeah. that, Nordstrom's, and then comes down to, you know, their agency, their, their top 5% agencies, and then goes out from there. That's going to be huge. The other thing, too, is that... Um, even aside from that integration with Shopify, um, what we're going to see happen in 2020 is that Instagram and obviously quite possibly Facebook, but Instagram first will become an e-commerce platform in total. Yes. Um, and it really, I saw the magic of this work and it wasn't like a, a, a tagged post like we were just talking about, um, about three months ago, I got hit with an ad for, uh, for makeup and because obviously I was natural. Taught, very natural for you to get natural it with an for me to for get out for makeup, right? Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, is that <laughs> when we introduce our team to clients, we always talk about Maddie's ability to do um, uh, uh, beauty makeup because she mm. does it for f- uh, photography, for video, for film, mm-hmm. all that type of stuff. And I say that every week we onboard someone. So of course the algorithm picks up on it and delivers me an ad for makeup. They, you, you heard George Wright. <laughs> Facebook is listening. Oh, it's totally listening. There's no two ways about it. But what, and, and, and to set to set the myth kind of straight, it's not that advertisers can listen to what you say and then choose to serve you an ad. It's a very deep background piece of the algorithm, which Facebook still says doesn't exist, but we've seen happen. You and I yes. did that experiment last year yes. where you said red shoes for an entire weekend on and on Sunday night, you texted me. Holy hell! I just got an ad for red oh, yeah. shoes. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> yeah. it's real. But like George explained, yeah. it's not a matter of oh now you know these jerks at Impact Media can know that I said red shoes and can target me. It's a matter of Facebook takes that into the interest targeting. So yeah. if you're targeting people that are interested in red shoes. Mm-hmm. Facebook's looking at okay, they're looking at it online. They're saying it, mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, at least from the research that we've done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, anyways, uh, the uh, the long and the short, kind of getting back to that, is that I ordered this makeup because it was something my daughter would would like. It was for Mac makeup, and this ad came up, and there was something different looking about it. And I tapped on it, and immediately it opened up an entire shopping experience mm. right inside of Instagram. It yep. was a shop built in Instagram. I'd never seen anything like it. So that's when we went ahead and it was a seamless checkout. It was one touch done. Yep. So where where this is going to be big and it's 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 dangerous for the buyer <laughs> because if you're like me, I'm like, damn, that looks really good. Yeah. I want that that whole get up, that outfit. Mm-hmm. Where where I feel uh and we've proven it with our, our retail client our uh, online clients that sell apparel. Mm. I mean look, your 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 customer Maybe you, your kids, you're you're looking at Instagram, and when you see that shot of Ken Roxon and his his Fox Racing, you know, uh, street lifestyle get up, and you're like, damn it, that, 
that looks good, man. I'd like to wear that, you know, on my date this weekend. What's going to happen is you're going to be able to click and you're going to be able to like, okay, I'm going to buy that, that flannel. I'm going to buy those jeans, man. Those shoes are sweet. I'm going to get those. Um, that is how it's going to be used. I was at Thanksgiving dinner, uh, last weekend with my, my wife. She's got a massive family and one of her little, uh, cousins came in, cousin, niece, huge family. I've lost track. Everybody needs name tags for me to know who they are. <laughs> she's she's 10 years old, so it's gone from her wearing like unicorn costumes to Thanksgiving dinner to now she's starting to dress like uh, a young lady. And it's mm-hmm. funny because she walks in and I'm like, man, she looks awesome awesome like Mm -hmm. she's got these fly shoes on Mm -hmm. she's got these designer jeans like where did she learn to dress like that and her mom said she looks at instagram nonstop. Mm -hmm. so it's what the youngsters call it is it's a it's a look book so essentially i look at somebody that i look up to which this this young lady did Mm -hmm. she has some influences she looks up to and she says mommy i want those shoes i want that shirt i want that hat i want those pants and her mom buys it so what's going to happen now is your 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 customers are going to look at the riders that you promote or the gear that whatever it is and they're going to say I want that and what George is saying is they're going to be able to click on that Instagram photo and they're going to be able to buy it right from that post yeah correct abso- absolutely and if we've learned anything from from Facebook and Instagram over the past five or six years is that when they introduce a new opportunity for you to keep a keep a customer on Facebook or on Instagram, but get them to take an action that profits you, those ads will actually perform better. So another way of thinking of this is if you're running an ad that drives someone off of Instagram to purchase on your store, yeah. okay, that's not going to fare for you as well as the ad that keeps them on Instagram yeah. and allows them to purchase because Facebook and Instagram do not want you to leave yeah. that the, the apps. And so that's why it's going to be, you know, right. going into that. We've seen it happen with, with lead generation. You know, the Facebook lead formats kill it now yeah, for you know, sure. because you're not getting anybody to leave Facebook and Facebook loves you to stay on Facebook yeah. and Instagram. Uh, go ahead. One, one thing I want to add to this that will help um, because a lot of the folks that listen to this, you advertise in, in Racer X print as well as online. So how can you tie what what you're maybe going to do on social media into the investment uh, and the time that you have in Racer X's advertising? Mm-hmm. It's what George and the team call omnipresent. So make sure that, look, if you're running a, a promotion online for a specific uh, line of apparel or uh, product line that you have, make sure that you uh, coincide that with, is that the right word, George? Yeah, sure, man. Sure, whatever. We'll use you it. know what I mean. Yeah. Make sure that it lines up with <coughs> the branding that you have in, in Racer X print, Absolutely. that you have in, in Racer X online, and anywhere else that you're advertising, because what's going to happen is they're going to see you on Facebook, then they're going to pick up the magazine, and you don't want them to see something that doesn't align with what they just saw online. Because right. what happens is it takes 5 to 12 uh, impressions before somebody is going to take action. Mm-hmm. So if they see product uh, line A on Facebook and then they get in Racer X and they're continued to be influenced by that mm-hmm. and then they get on Racer X online and they see a sidebar ad or a, uh, a banner ad and it's something in that same category it's only going to help you push them through so that's how you can kind of tie all these advertising mediums together yeah absolutely yeah, staying uh, kind of coherent and all that one of the other coherent, things that was coherent the that's the word that's yeah, the word yeah I was actually googling it as you said it. I was like well, <laughs> what the, the hell are we talking yes. about <laughs> um, the, uh, the other thing that people need to kind of keep in mind too is that as we talk about going towards Shopify, if you are on Shopify already or you are, you're not on Shopify already, the theme, the Shopify theme you should be using is called Palo Alto. Um, hmm. That is our two largest, most successful clients right now are both using the Palo Alto theme. And it's not because of the look and feel because that's all customizable. It's the flow to purchase. That's the important thing. Just like those new Instagram ads, once the, the deal is, is, is done between uh, Shopify and Instagram, uh, is going to be a seamless, very quick, very easy, just go through and check out. The Palo Alto theme is the most efficient way to get people to spend money. It's funny because Palo Alto is a place in California that is a lot of folks in the motocross industry know of. So, ah, perfect. George, not not knowing that when he said that, it, I didn't realize that was the name of the theme That's that is the working the so well for our clients. So, yeah. it is a match made in it's heaven. It's a match made in for heaven for the moto industry. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, and that's where, you know, we we've actually had some people who were on Shopify and we were like, "Nah, you got to go to Palo Alto." You gotta, yeah. And when they did, 
they're they sort of making more money. So that yeah. it's the it's an amazing theme. So when you look at that theme, which theme means for those that have no, no idea what we're talking about, theme is just the look, the feel, the yeah. design. It's the theme, right? So here's the thing: it doesn't matter if you look at it and you're like, yeah, Palo Alto, yeah, but this one looks cooler, George. What George is telling you is strictly from data, from proof of results that we've gotten. George might like the way something else looks um, just from a visual, but it's a matter of how it performs. Mm-hmm. And I always, uh, the, the way we think about uh, themes and layouts of websites, it's the same thought process that goes into the way your grocery store is laid out. You might not have ever thought of this, but there is a reason why the milk is in the very back, Mm. why the bread is where it's located, because they want you to have a certain experience. They don't want you to walk in, get get what they know you need, and then leave. The reason you walk in for milk and leave with like $50 worth of other stuff, or if you're going to uh, Whole Foods, $500 worth of other stuff, (laughs) is because it's it's laid out a certain way Mm. to help you convert uh, for the grocery store's profit. That's the the thought process behind what George is saying. The Palo Alto uh, uh, theme is laid out for your success in, in getting the most revenue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the other part of that is you have um, you have this ability to within Shopify to customize this. And while you might be able to take your current theme and add some Palo Alto like features to it. We've done the, the experiment already, and it doesn't work the same way. It's got to be that exact theme, and it's and it works beautifully. I mean, it's yeah. really it's it's amazing. And the one thing we said to a client was, they said, "Why well, I don't like the way that looks." I'm like, "How do you like the look of more money in your pocket?" Yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, and they were like, "Oh, we like that." We're like, "Go with this theme, <laughs> you know. Right. Go with this theme. You yeah. can change the font, that's you change awesome. the color, it all works out." What else we got, George? Um, let me see here. What else do we have? Things that we're working. Is that it? Uh, get... No, 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 no. We got yeah, a couple. Oh yeah. So so the 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 role of, of branding. So in your organic um, in your organic presences on Facebook and Instagram especially uh, played a huge part in the success that our clients had this year in general. Uh, so I'm thinking of thinking of a hate brand. Hmm. Okay, Matt Vincent is an unbelievable branding. Guru is for not the word. No, guru is not the word. I'm, I, I like to use master, a master, um, and his brand is extremely strong. His organic brand is extremely strong. So that is like kind of laying us some really good foundational work because if people are really interested in your organic content, when they see the ads, mm-hmm. they are going to convert at a much higher rate than if you don't do anything with right. organic. So it's really important to have somebody on your team uh, throughout the year who is really whose job really is to keep that organic content yes. uh, super relevant, uh, up to date, all the proper tagging and different things like that, um, because that's really just going to build build it up for you. So when you do start running ads, you're just going to pull from that one. And really one of the most effective things we did this year as well um, is, uh, and what you should continue to do as well, is you build up this massive organic following with a lot of interaction. And then what you do is you create an audience of people who have interacted with your Instagram account over the past 180 days. Yes. And that is that is money in the bank right there. Yeah, that's so, a good tip. Yeah, but, always keep up, always keep up on your Instagram presence. Yeah. What I want to do with this, um, you know, we'll call this the the master class series, is is bring in George, and we're also going to bring Lacey and some of the other team members in, um, I, because it's super valuable. Because I mean, the bottom line is, ninety five percent of the clients that we work with are moto mm-hmm. and some cycling, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So what we're talking about, while we're not, I mean, look, we can't always say client A, B, and C just for client privacy rules, but I'm telling you, what what George is telling you is generating significant revenue for clients that you know, that you might buy from, that you're partner with, whatever it is, in the moto space. These are the things that work for your customers. Um, Not, you know, we're not talking about this is what's working in healthcare and, and law firms. That's not who we work with. So take what George is telling you and try it. And and also, if you have questions about this, reach out. I say it every week. You can send questions to questions at motomarketingpodcast.com. Um, and if you have questions specifically for George, we'll get him to answer them for you. We'll answer them on air. But if there's something that you've been trying, that you've been stuck on with your marketing, or that you have a big product launch coming up, and you just have a couple questions of what you should do with 
your website or with Facebook or, hey, what role does Twitter play? Should I be on YouTube? Those types of things. Um, if you have questions for the folks at RacerX, hey, how can I optimize my my one pr- my one page ad? Like what what's a what's too busy? What's not busy enough? Um, we can bring folks on that can answer those questions for you so that you can get the most possible out of your advertising, be it digital, be it print, be it Facebook, whatever it is. Um, so send those questions to questions at motomarketingpodcast.com. George has got a ton of stuff to go over. We're going to stop it there for this episode, but every few episodes we're going to bring, George, I'm going to have you come back in, drop a little bit more on them. Yeah. George can, can glaze those eyes over pretty quick <laughs> just with his knowledge. So I think today you've got enough to sink your teeth into. Try it. Let us know what your thoughts are. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and ask questions there. I'll answer much quicker. It's at Luke Nessler. It's L-U-K-E-N-E-S-L-E-R. George, where can they find you on Instagram? Um, I think I just changed my handle. It's, uh, I think it's George.cc. It's, let's check uh, that Last out. name is spelled C-I-C-C-I. Let's, let's make sure. Because yeah. George's content. My content's all over the place. It's George's content. George, just like my, George, just like George, me. George, George tucks his tail in between his legs and says, "My content's a little place." Yeah, that is George CC. You can also follow Impact Media um, online and and, uh, and meet some of the team. It's Impact I M P A K T underscore Media. Um, you guys know where to follow Racer X, right? Everybody knows where to follow Racer X. Um, be sure to subscribe to uh, their their digital subscription. George and I both use it. Um, George does a lot of traveling. I do a lot of traveling. I don't always like to have have the magazine itself with me because it's another thing I got to pack, but I got my phone with me at all times. So that is uh, a big help. And then obviously the additional content that you get in those episodes or <laughs> it with the subscription, you're not going to get the exclusive content that people like uh, Davey and, 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 and Weege and, and Steve Mathis are creating unless you're subscribed. Uh, and you're going to get that in print. You're going to get it in digital as well. So George, it's always good chatting with you, man. Absolutely, sir. Thanks for having me on again. I look forward to the next one and uh, looking forward to closing out Q4 for our clients in a big way. That's right. And any way we can help you close out Q4, let us know. Again, you can submit your questions to questions at motomarketingpodcast.com, and we will see you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Moto Marketing Podcast. If your goal is to get real, measurable results from your marketing that will grow your company revenue, then check out how Impact Media can get the same results that they have for Moto's most iconic brands by visiting thinkimpact.com. That's T-H-I-N-K-I-M-P-A-K-T.com. Have a marketing question that you want answered on the show? Send your questions to questions at motomarketingpodcast.com. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. And we'll catch you on the next episode of the Moto Marketing Podcast.